Hello, I'm Kevin Davis, Editor-in-Chief of BioIT World here at the Rhode Island Convention Center where above us is uh, CHI's meeting on exploring next generation sequencing. But with me right now is Patrice Milos, the uh, Vice President and Chief Scientific Officer of Helicos Biosciences. Patrice, thanks for being here. Thank you, Kevin, very much. Uh, Patrice, tell us a little bit, for those who aren't familiar with Helicos, uh, just a little bit about the history of the company and the founders. So Helicos as a company was started in late 2003, early 2004, when the first employees joined, based on some really remarkable technology that came out of Steve Quake's lab, where he was able to image the incorporation of a nucleotide into a growing strand of DNA. Um, this was a very conceptual idea beforehand that everyone was really striving to achieve, and Steve Quake actually demonstrated this in a PNAS paper that was published in 2003. And the company was founded uh, by a visionary group of individuals, Stan Lapidus, who is uh, renowned in the life sciences community. This was, I think, his fourth, if not fifth, uh, startup company. Uh, Nubara Fayan, who was, uh, again, a, uh, an individual who's well known in the life sciences community. Steve Quake and uh, a fair amount of guidance from Eric Lander in the early days. This is single molecule sequencing, which I guess is the, the most distinctive thing about it compared to the other next generation sequencing platforms that are currently commercialized. Absolutely. Um, Helicos' technology is truly the only single molecule sequencing company, um, a commercial company, that actually takes single molecules of DNA and visualizes the synthesis, the incorporation of nucleotides into those growing strands of DNA. You had a paper in Science just a few months ago um, on a sort of one of the earlier versions of the technology. Do you want to just summarize what that what that said and what that meant for the company? Sure. So our science article uh, was published in April 2008, and it really was um, the landmark publication, the first single molecule sequencing of DNA. That was an early version of our chemistry that uh, demonstrated the uh, complete genome sequence of M13 and the ability to detect mutations in that. Um, how many instruments have you placed so far? These are not cheap by any means. They're over a million dollars. They come with a massive uh, piece of uh, computer hardware attached to the, attached to the instruments. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's been placed so far and what you envision will happen uh, in terms of future sales and placements going forward. Sure. So um, our first, uh, our, our the product was introduced commercially in 2008, and early in 2008 we announced our first order um, in February of 2008 to Expression Analysis when it was shipped to them. Um, they have the instrument now in their uh, facility. It has been through a number of uh, verification and validation runs and is shortly running um, customer samples. They're a service uh, group for service organization which really supports all the pharmas, um, biotechs and so forth. And, and while I might, you might suggest the cost is expensive, um, the fact that it is truly an integrated package with the analysis um, engine associated with it, um, it is a, a, a production instrument that was um, developed to be the instrument you will need to sequence the human genome. You spoke at the meeting yesterday and you mentioned some technological uh, improvements and enhancements that you're making similar to all of the, the companies. Uh, this is not a, a, a static process by any means. Could you just summarize what's, what you're really making progress on in terms of in expanding the, the length of the reads, for example, and uh, making sure that you can read every base? So I, I think what's key is we're always driving technological innovation around several key areas. One being the length of read, which is key for uh, the field. Um, the driving down the error rate, um, increasing the throughput of the instrument. For example, I talked at, uh, 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 mentioned earlier in um, the summer, we had sequenced a bacterial genome in 16 channels of the heliscope. Today, we can sequence a single a bacterial organism greater than five megabases in a single channel, getting 35x coverage, and this is the data we talked about. Um, also Staph aureus, Rhodobacter, besides E. coli. Um, key hallmark of the technology is the limited bias that we're seeing due to the fact it is single molecule, no amplification required, a minimal sample handling and preparation, which really limits the bias you see. 
There have been some key uh, personnel changes at Helicos just in the last few months. Uh, your founder and CEO is now uh, chairman, uh, Stan Lapidus. Uh, one or two key scientists or founding scientists have moved on. What's the new uh, sort of senior management and scientific uh, hierarchy look like? So uh, Steve Lombardi is now our uh, CEO and is, sits on the board of directors. Steve comes um, with an amazing background in the life sciences industry, having been at a number of life science companies. And Steve now, uh, Stan hired him as uh, uh, chief of sales and marketing. He moved on to chief operating officer, now CEO has a, 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 an amazing ability to see to the future and what we like to say skate you know skate really where the puck is going to be and not where it is and I think that's key to the technology today um, also he brings an amazing um, sense of culture to the organization as we get larger and grow really into this commercial company um, we have to think hard about people our customer and uh, the innovation we need to foster internally uh, in closing, Patrice, uh, you joined Helicos from Pfizer. Your interest was in pharmacogenomics and personalized medicine. Talk a little bit about your interest, really re almost regardless of the platform, where you want to see next generation and next next generation sequencing going. What do you really hope this technology is going to bring about in the next few years in terms of medicine? So, um, you know, as you said, I was at Pfizer for 14 years, um, joining Helicos last June. And one of the main reasons I joined was seeing this revolution that was occurring in the field of DNA sequencing. Um, it, absolutely amazing. And I saw the opportunity that the single molecule sequencing technology offered to really see what's in a cell, to teach us about the biology of a cell unlike we've ever seen before. Um, with that, I think, is merged my passion with personalized medicine. Um, in which, as I was researching studies at Pfizer, there was this growing recognition that the individual component of that clinical study, the discovery engine, was really going to be key, that a, a population-based approach, as we looked at whole genome scans and so forth, was just scratching the surface of our understanding of common disease, and how could we unravel the complexity of human disease at the individual level. And so it was that I left Pfizer really to marry my interest and personalized medicine with advancing a technology that I think will really drive us to the future. But I can't get you to put a date on the thousand dollar genome, can I? You know, what I would say is I think we will see it in the next two to three years. It's going to come more quickly. I always say technology delivers, delivers ahead of time and below budget if you can only imagine where you need to go. Well, Patrice, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for your talk yesterday and, and good luck in your future endeavors and those of Helicos. I'm Kevin Davis of BioIT World. Thanks a lot.